Hey everyone, I hope you're doing good. My name is Joao and I'm gonna show you how to build your own coding window with Metrica Sports advanced coding platform, CodePad. You can use CodePad for live or post-game analysis to get your individual or collective events recorded. CodePad is great for any sport, like tennis for example. You can get in touch with us if you want more templates. We have a lot of them available besides football. Let's start by building a coding window similar to this one, which is a good example of the key events you can gather from a football match. You got your attack and defense phases, you got your attack and defensive transitions, both set pieces, and then three nice codes that are very important to a football match. Chances, shots, and goals. So first thing you need to do is create a video project. You name it, you open it, and you add a video file. Now you create a coding file, you name it, open it, and right here you open your code pad. You can move this window around and resize it to your preference. There are four main buttons you can create. A code, a tag, an image, and a connector. Let's add a code. When you create a button, the settings always comes up, allowing you to edit anything you want from it. Let's name our code attack. You can change the colors of the name, the background, the border, change its aspect in so many ways. The counter will tell you how many events happened and the shortcut allows you to insert a hotkey so you don't have to press the button itself. The pre and post time refer to the duration you want the clip to have and it will differ depending on the event you're recording. If you want to make sure your clips are not too short or too long, the best way to set your post time is with no post time at all. Like that, you will decide when to stop recording the event. For the attack phase, it's a good idea to have a pre time between 1 and 3 seconds to make up for any delay that might happen while coding. When you start coding, you'll adapt these numbers to your personal preference. You can move your codes around your coding window, and if you want to copy, in this case we want to create two other codes for attacking transition and attacking set pieces. The fastest way to do that is to copy the attack code by holding down the option key and dragging it away. You can rename this code attacking transition and now we do the same, hold down the option key and drag it away to create our attacking set piece. If you wish to align the buttons, you can hold down the shift key while dragging the code and it will snap into places. This will allow you to organize your workspace more neatly. If you hold command, you can select more than one at the same time. And if you want, you can make changes like these ones. Change the size or the aspect of them all at once. Now we can create the defensive codes by selecting these three already created and holding down the option key, I'm gonna drag them away to create these three other codes. We can immediately change their names Select them all again with the command key held down and change their color for reference. Now let's create the three codes for chances, shots and goals. Since these three are already selected, I'll hold down the option key and drag it down. We can change their names to chances, shot, and goal. Select them again, hold down the option key and put them here. These three will be opposition. So I'm gonna add that to the, to the code. Put it just a little bit smaller. Perfect. Now we'll select all six of these new codes and choose a pre and post time. Since we can only click on these events right after they happen, a chance, a shot, 
or a goal, we can only know once it happens, somewhere between 5 and 15 seconds is appropriate for the pre-time. And something between 1 and 3 seconds for post-time. This way I make sure I get the play from the beginning. We'll now create an inactive button by choosing a code and copying in it. In this menu right here, I can choose to turn it from a code into an inactive button. This is useful to highlight the match we're working on or to label the codes you created. We'll create another code and call it kickoff. We'll turn it into a code in this menu right here. This will serve as a reference in your timeline to know whenever both halves start. So we just need a very short amount of it. Two seconds will do. This will be used to synchronize the video with the XML when you, whenever you need to, especially when doing live coding. We have a specific video about live coding in our help center if you want to learn more about it. So let's switch to record mode and start coding from this moment. We are defending, imagining my team is in red, the opponent in white. Remember, you can pause at any time and the recording will keep going unless you stop it. So with the right arrow key, I'm going to fast forward 5 seconds until something different happens. So right now we've just lost the ball and entered an attacking transition. So I'm going to stop my defense code and start my attacking transition code. Opponent gets the ball under control, so stop attacking transition, start defensive transition. We get the ball back, start this one, stop this one, start this one. We, we lost the ball again, stop attacking transition, start defensive transition. And we get the ball back again, stop defensive transition, start attacking transition. At this moment, we entered our attack phase, so I'm gonna stop my attacking transition and start my attacking phase. As the play comes to an end, ends up, I can stop my attacking code and record my chance and the shot. And now is a great time to talk about connectors, because they will change the way you work and make it much more easier and faster to work. Connectors are meant to reduce the amount of clicks you do during your coding process. There are three different types of them. The absolute connector prevents two codes from being active at the same time. The trigger connector will automatically trigger another code to start and the diffuse connector will automatically stop another code. Let's go into modify mode and think about our coding window. Our attack phase and defense cannot be running at the same time. So, I can connect an absolute connector from attack to defense. This way, I'm sure that defense and attack will never be running at the same time. Attacking transition and defensive transition, it's exactly the same case. We don't want them running because they cannot be happening at the same time. So I'll connect an absolute connector between these two. I can do it up here, just like I did this one, or I can click with two fingers on my trackpad or with the right button on my mouse and add an absolute connector from here and then connect it right here. Now let's think about the defensive transition. It can only start when the attack phase stops. So you can connect a diffuse connector from defensive transition to attack. We can connect another diffuse connector from defense to defensive transition. More often than not, your team will start their defensive phase once the defensive transition is over. So this will save you another click. We can do the same thing the other way around. When we get the ball back, we want the attacking transition code to stop the defensive phase. 
So we'll connect the diffuse connector from here to here. And the same thing here. When we enter the attacking phase, we want the attacking transition to stop. So we'll put the diffuse connector from attack to attacking transition. Now let's use a trigger connector. When we score a goal, it's because a chance was created and there was a shot attempt, most of the times anyway. So we could put a trigger connector from goal to shot. And why not put one as well from goal to chances. So whenever there is a goal, I will record that event and he will automatically trigger shots and chances as well. And of course we can do this for the opposition. So let's start coding from the beginning and understand how helpful these triggers really are. Let's start from the same defensive phase where we were. We'll switch to record mode to start coding again. And press play, we are defending. And now there will come a sequence of transitions. So now we enter an attacking transition and because I have the connector, I only need to press once and he will stop the defensive one and start the attacking transition phase. Opponent gets the ball, we enter defensive transition, we click it, we got the ball back, we start attacking transition, so he will automatically stop the defensive transition. Enter defensive transition again, stop it, get back the ball. Stop it, one click. As you can see already, we're saving a lot of editing time just by using these triggers. Stop this attacking transition because we enter our attacking phase, click, and it stops. Play is over, stop it, chances. Imagine there was a goal. With one click, I would activate three codes. So you get the gist of it. And now that you understand how connectors work, you can design your coding window to fit your needs and make your workflow very, very dynamic. Let me tell you about these useful shortcuts up here in this menu. So right here, you can change your background options. If you want to move the coding window around and resize it, change its size, and then fit everything into the canvas, you can. With the zoom options, you click fit to canvas or command one. With command minus, you can zoom out. Command plus, you can zoom in. Say you wanna resize it again. Command one, and there you go. It fits again into your canvas. In the image section, you can add your own image to the code pad, and you can add different shapes of fields, half fields. You can add a shirt or a goal. And again, import any image that you want. More importantly, you can turn these images into codes or tags to make it a more visual experience. Once you've built your coding window, you can save it as a template and share it with your staff or duplicate it and keep adding new useful buttons for different kinds of analysis. Now let me show you an example of a fully coded match with this same template. You can see the number of events right here on the left-hand panel. If you want to visualize them, the 52 attacking phases, for example, you just go to your timeline down here and click on them. If you want to save these moments into clips, it's very simple. Make sure you have a playlist created and selected, then click on the event in the timeline you wish to save as a clip and press the letter S on your keyboard. That clip is now in your playlist, ready to be illustrated, exported, or shown in presentation mode. If you want to choose specific clips to put in your playlist, hold down Command and then press S to save them into your playlist. Imagine you want them all. You use Command A to select them all, and as you can see, 52 events selected, press the letter S and they will all end up in your playlist. Super easy. Once you've finished coding, you can export your coding file as an XML and share it with your coaching staff. 
You can also download it as a CSV file and keep all the recorded events neatly organized in a database looking something like this. So now you're able to create statistical databases, organize your events by clips and playlists, export them as video files, show them in presentation mode and illustrate easy and fast. All this at affordable prices. Not bad, eh? Get in touch with us if you have any doubts regarding our plans and thanks for watching.